Welcome to the lesson on food chain and trophic levels. Now, food chain is probably something you're familiar with, the concept. When we did the sunlight for breakfast poster, that was basically a food chain. Or in fact, it was a couple of food chains going from the sun to, you know, the plant that did photosynthesis to some animal that ate it, like a cow, and then you eating the cow or hamburger. Okay, so... Um, you know, so that's basically a food chain. You're familiar with the concept, so I don't have to spend too much time with it. But in nature, food chains are very, very important, right? This is how energy flows through the ecosystem. Energy flow. All right, so energy flow. And then trophic levels, that's a word that you may not have heard before. Well, you might have heard it in the reading from uh, last lesson. But uh, trophic, a trophism is like to eat or nutrition. So the trophic level is the levels of you know, the steps along the food chain or links on the food chain, if you want to call it that. And OK, so we're going to take it a little bit beyond what we did before. So one concept of the food chain then is the, um, you know, it's sort of like the, the little fish is eating my bigger fish and it's eaten by even bigger fish. And then the biggest fish eats it. You know, that's kind of sort of right. <laughs> but, you know, really, it's, it can be a lot more basic than just that. For example, you know, here's a food, part of a food chain anyway, <clears throat> where, you know, the plant is photosynthetic and it gets the energy of the sunlight and it makes the food. It produces the food, making glucose, right? And then the bunny, runny comes along and eats the, the plant. And that's where it gets its energy from by eating the plant. The energy is stored by the plant in photosynthesis. And then the energy is eaten, you know, consumed. So the bunny is a consumer first order consumer um and then you know that energy is incorporated into its own body and then maybe a wolf will eat the bunny rabbit which might not seem like a lot of fun uh for the rabbit but it's you know the way it works and it's necessary for the uh, wolf to survive and so what you end up is something called a food chain so even though you have it written as the title please go ahead and write it again food chain and here you have the plant is the producer it produces the food by doing photosynthesis and the food is the chemically stored energy right stored in the glucose molecule when we talked about you know chemistry before the glucose molecule will store that energy in it kind of like a spring will store the energy in a dart gun boing, you know and shoot it off and then a grasshopper will eat the plant and there will be chemically stored energy and now it can survive off of that energy and then a bird might eat the grasshopper and now it surviving off of the energy that had been stored in the grasshopper's body now the grasshopper wasn't intentionally storing it there for the bird the grasshopper was you know trying to say hey this is me this is my body you know but you but the molecules of living stuff it has energy stored in it right and so uh if you get if it, the grasshopper gets eaten by the bird then the bird gets the energy so it goes on then because maybe a snake is going to eat the bird, right? And now it gets the energy and then an owl comes by and eats the snake. And it now, so what you have is different levels here of, uh, this is the producer of the food, the plants. And then you have consumers. This is the first order consumer. Uh, and this is the second, uh, secondary consumer. This is the third order consumer, also called the tertiary consumer, because it eats a, a consumer. These, these guys are, this is an herbivore, and these guys are carnivores. So there's another little uh, vocabulary there. Um, a vocabulary I'm not going to use much, and I don't really care that much. Maybe if it was high school, I would. But there's also, this is called an autotroph, where the plant can make its own food. Auto means self, right? Like an automobile would be in the olden days when you had a horse-drawn wagon where you had you had to get pulled by the wagon well the automobile could didn't need a, a a horse it could pull itself and so that's where that name comes from automobile well an autotroph makes its own food and then a heterotroph would get it have to eat something else to get its food hetero means uh, other so it has to eat some other organism and the bird eats the grasshopper snake eats the bird and the owl eats the snake and assuming nothing eats the owl that would be sometimes what's called a top predator or an apex predator and so uh looking at the food chain here a little bit let's take a look at one where you have the vocabulary here i would like you to write this down if it's white you got to write down the producer is the grass 
it produces the food or the tree right and then the caterpillar eats the leaves and it would be consuming what the tree produced okay so the producer is the plant doing photosynthesis getting the energy from the sun and then the primary consumer primary means first it eats the plant and that's also called an herbivore okay and then the secondary consumer is a carnivore it means it eats meat uh, carne means meat okay so it eats another animal and that would be this is a primary consumer first order and here's the secondary consumer and then a tertiary consumer which is third order would eat the shrew okay and so you can have these steps in the food chain which we're going to get later on in the lesson we'll get why that's uh, kind of important <laughs>